going to a different economy, and we're going to be learning more about that uh, as we go. But clearly, we're, we're, we're learning that things can be done uh, from remote, remote locations. We're learning that technology can replace people even more than we thought. We're not going back to the same economy. We're going. We're recovering, but to a different economy, and it'll be one that is more leveraged to technology. And I worry that that is going to make it even more difficult than it was for for many workers. In Silicon Valley, and my friends who work in technology know that what we did to the manufacturing workers, we are now going to do to the retail workers, the call center workers, the fast food workers, the truck drivers, and then even bookkeepers, accountants, uh, insurance agents, lawyers, and on and on through the economy. So what happened to the manufacturing workers is a very clear sign. This effort, and China has big plans for this. They intend to seed um, their digital yuan into the global environment by giving it away to visitors at next winter's Olympics. When they arrive at the airport, they're going to get di yuan digital wallets. They're going to receive digital yuan. They're going to use it uh, throughout their visits to Beijing, and then they're going to take it back to their own countries. They see this as a huge advantage. Why? Because who controls the underlying protocols, who un controls the underlying standards of the future of money will control the future of money. Welcome to the Crypto Teacher. And guys, you know, I come back with that video just to make you think. And we have on CNBC, Coinbase customers getting hacked. And guys, you know, this is all part of the Hegelian dialectic. We know in crypto, we don't keep that type of money on an exchange, but they know the masses are watching. Same way with the stock market. Trillions of dollars are being made, but majority of people don't want to touch the stock market because they feel like they're going to lose. So the media's job is to put fear in you, so therefore you don't make money. I'm not your financial advice, not financial advice. Please do your own research. Yes, you can have that type of money on exchange to do whatever trading you want to do or investing and then you take it offline on a whatever wallet that you have. But guys, when it comes to the media, they're always going to put fear in you. That's the reason why it's very, very important for you to educate your friends and family on investing, not just trading. Because guys, we know what the fourth industrial revolution looks like. But we also know it's going to take about four to five years for it to complete. Even though we know technology is going to keep moving faster and faster, and we know where this thing is going, but the fact is it still takes time because we know when it comes to the new world order, it's all planned out. Y'all have a wonderful day. Tanya and Jared Vidovic discovered cryptocurrency through Tanya's co-worker a few years ago and they thought the boom that attracted so many investors would give their young family a financial leg up. It was going to be a way to retire and be secure. So the Florida couple started buying Bitcoin and Ethereum using Coinbase, the largest U.S. cryptocurrency exchange. So how did it go at first? Up until recently, it was great. But earlier this year, the Vitovics say their account was hacked. Their investment, which had grown from a total of about $45,000 to some $168,000, was essentially wiped out going down to $587. I sign onto my computer and I see a ton of security alerts, password changes, everything. And then I signed onto the crypto and I said, it's gone. To their astonishment, they say they couldn't get anyone from Coinbase on the phone, just email. It turns out they weren't the first investors to have that problem. More than 11,000 complaints since 2016, mostly related to customer service, have been filed with the Federal Trade Commission and the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. And the Better Business Bureau, in an alert, says Coinbase has not responded to a pattern of complaints from consumers who state they are locked out of their accounts even after providing required information or updates. And customers have difficulty reaching the company. This not only was our future, this is my kids' future, too. You wrote them and said you lost $170,000 and they didn't call you back? No. They still haven't. Here's how the crime often works. Hackers get into the victim's phone and redirect texts and confirmations to themselves and respond as if they're the victim giving them access to the crypto accounts. Tanya's last communication with Coinbase came in late May when Coinbase gave her back access to her account after she was locked out for a month. There was always a struggle with customer service. Former Coinbase part-time customer service employee Jason Rose says the company's customers needed reassurance in taking the plunge into crypto. They need that touch of somebody being there 
while they're going through this complex transaction. Rose worked at Coinbase from 2014 to 2016, and he says the company was phasing out live chat. The decision to do that was, was disastrous because the time that it took to respond back to emails took a lot longer than it would for a live chat. Unfortunately, most people who contact me would tell you it's poor customer service. David Silver, an attorney who specializes in cryptocurrency cases, represents the Vitovics. And they're being almost victimized twice. While the company was happy to go on camera to talk about its IPO and its earnings, it repeatedly declined to sit down for an interview on customer service. Instead, sending a statement saying, in part, we grew from 43-plus million users at the end of 2020 to 68-plus million registered users as of June 30th, 2021. Through all of this growth, some of our customers unfortunately experienced challenges and delays reaching our support team. The company would not disclose the number of accounts that have been taken over, but a spokesperson said only a small number, less than 0.01% of our customers, have been impacted by account takeovers. Law enforcement officials are seeing crypto account takeovers across the country. FBI analyst Ali Kamoli told us these crimes are different from those in the real world in one important way. One of the difficult things about cryptocurrency transactions, right, is that they're irreversible at that point. So when the attacker withdraws those funds from the exchange, that's not a transaction that, uh, that you can take back. How big of a problem is that, the, the, the crypto exchange accounts being completely deleted? It's obviously a huge impact on the victims, um, which is incredibly difficult for, for them and something that, you know, we're always looking to, to help out with. Shep, a Coinbase spokesperson told us it eliminated live chat in early 2020 to avoid long wait times. But as we continue to ask questions, the spokesperson also told us that Coinbase will roll out phone support for account takeovers this month, plus live chat support later this year. As for the Vitovics, Coinbase reached out by email a few days ago, saying the company would not reimburse the couple because the breach on their account was due to a third party and not Coinbase's fault. The most powerful person in the world is the storyteller. The storyteller sets the vision, values, and agenda of an entire generation to come, Steve Jobs. And guys, you know I truly believe in this. When you look at the New World Order, they're the storytellers. And that's the reason why I wrote my New World Order book. But guys, now it's time to change the current generation. And I wrote three kids' books. You know I love the Trinity because I understand the power that's in it. So I have three books. We have an opportunity to change the generation, to educate, not just me, but I want to show you that I take action on a daily basis. And I want you to take action on a daily basis, whether it's your job, whether it's in your community. We have an opportunity right now to educate the masses. I posted this on my Twitter account. Please share. But this is a short clip of the three books. There's going to be a clothing line and action figure. Please get these books for your kids, nephews, cousins, friends. So therefore, we can start the re-education now. Because as we see, the fourth industrial revolution foundation is definitely here. Robots, algorithms, drones, taking humanity out the picture. We have to re-educate. But let's get into the video. Part 1, King Yahshua and Grandma Tim Save the village. Part 2, King Yahshua and Grandma Tim Save New York. Long COVID-33. Part 3, King Yahshua and Grandma Tim goes to China. It's mandatory to get Part 1, Part 2, and Part 3 of this series. It's time to re-educate Generation Z.